Hey everyone, it's Lance from Epics and Stuffs. And in today's video, I want to talk a bit about FEP sheets and how you can maintain them. As someone who creates, prints and shares a lot of his works, I get loads of questions regarding how I go about doing things. Some of those questions relate to FEP sheets. Questions such as, when should I get rid of a FEP sheet? How do you maintain a FEP sheet? How do I get the most out of my FEP sheet? Suffice to say, I'm going to say FEP and FEP a lot in this video. So I'll be going through 10 things which I do to maintain my FEP and get the most out of them. It's worth knowing this list is not exhaustive. There's loads of things you can do. If what you're doing at the moment is working for you and you're getting great results, then stick to it. If you're happy with the amount of life you're getting out of your FEP, then that's fine. If I've missed something, then feel free to comment down below. So for those who are new to 3D printing, what is FEP? It stands for fluorinated ethylene propylene. And when it comes to resin 3D printing, it is essentially a thin piece of film which sits between your UV screen and the build plate. Here is an example of a pretty well used FEP film on a vat. I would still use this. In fact, it's still got plenty of life left in it. <coughs> this is a brand new FEP sheet on one of Elegoo's disposable resin vats. So the quality of your prints can directly be impacted by the quality of your FEP. It's also essential in maintaining your printer and making sure it works correctly. A bad FEP can cause a lot of failed prints and it's one of the first ports of call when troubleshooting. So with that said, let's get into the 10 things that I do to maintain my FEP. So number one, regularly empty the vat and let the FEP film breathe. Plenty of people, including myself, leave resin in the vat for days on end, which is fine when the printer is in consistent use. However, in some instances, leaving it in for one, two, three weeks can cause issues. Rotating that resin out, letting the FEP breathe, and then pouring back in some mixed resin will help. I would say this is especially important on larger resin printers, where suction and overall cost of printing is just a lot higher. Number two, use rafts when printing where possible. This type of support structure has a few benefits. It typically helps with plate adhesion, which will result in less failures, which in turn is good for your FEP. A raft also gives every support additional strength, meaning they are less likely to break under the peel forces. This is especially important with a model that has a lot of supports. Failed supports can leave debris in the vat, which if gone unseen, when the build plate homes again, can potentially pierce your FEP film. So yeah, rafts. I use rafts on every single print I do. Number three. I don't use water to clean out my vats. I use IPA. IPA is way more effective at breaking down resin, even the water washable ones. A lot of resin, unless cured, can react badly with water. Some harden, some start to separate, and if done on your FEP, it's just not a good time. In fact, you're probably making life harder for yourself if you use water to clean out resin from your FEP. So I use a little bit of IPA as well as some IPA wipes. So talking about IPA wipes, number four, when cleaning the FEP, keep it well lubricated and avoid stuff like paper towels and instead use microfiber cloths or IPA wipes. I personally use IPA wipes because they're pre-lubricated with IPA anyway, which is what I use to clean the vat in the first place. And then once it's clean, I can let the IPA just evaporate which removes the need for me to actually physically dry the FEP with something else. The reason to avoid paper towels is because they're slightly abrasive. And when using them to dry or clean the FEP sheet, they will leave tiny marks on the FEP, which over time will make it cloudy. To use another example, if you've ever seen a brand new car, the paint job is typically pristine. Over time, when you wash it with sponges, towels and mitts, you might notice in certain lights, it starts to look a bit cloudier and you'll notice swirl marks because a lot of people tend to swirl when they clean. When cleaning an FEP sheet, it's best to avoid swirls. Those tiny swirls are caused by debris between the paint and the medium you use to touch the surface of the car. The same goes for the FEP film. To summarize, keep it lubricated, avoid paper towels when you can instead using microfiber cloths or IPA wipes and don't swirl when cleaning the FEP. Instead, use up, down, back and forward motions. So for number five, I'm gonna try and demonstrate this. A lot of people like to use scrapers, plastic or otherwise, 
to remove failed prints. I used to do this at the start. Those scrapers can sometimes pierce the FEP film or cause scratches and marks. If there's a big lump of a failed print on the bottom of your FEP and you've drained it, what I like to do is, with gloves on of course, is roll the back of my hand underneath the FEP to dislodge the, the failed print and then pull that away. Don't use scrapers and don't use your fingernail and rub up and down. You're just gonna cause extra marks and potentially pierce your FEP. So number six, this is more of a general practice which helps keep the FEP intact. And that is don't overload your build plate. If you overload your build plate, you're gonna be creating irregular suction forces on the FEP, which over time stretches the FEP slightly. A few prints here and there will be fine, but if it's done constantly, the likelihood is the FEP will become slightly warped or loose, which will just result in more failures over time. Number seven, relocate your models and use all the available clean FEP you can. Using this pass FEP as an example, you can see a majority of the wear is localized to the middle. I can get a lot more out of this FEP if I slice my models with them towards the corners or the side. Just be careful not to get too close to the side of the build volume, purely because the, the quality of the UV array on the extents of the build area gets lower the closer to the edges it goes. So yeah, spread out your models, use as much room as you can, but be careful not to get too far to the sides, otherwise you might end up with a failed print. Use your judgment. So number eight, some of this might be self-explanatory, but not everyone does this. I certainly didn't when I started 3D printing, which is clean your build plate after every print and regularly ensure it's level. A lot of resin is retained on the build plate once you've printed. Sometimes when removing a print, small bits of debris get chipped off and lie on the build plate, which if put back onto the machine without being cleaned, could be pushed up against your FEP, again, causing wear. And having the build plate unlevel can cause stretching of the FEP over time as well. I'm not saying level it after every print, that's insane, I don't do that. But once every couple of weeks, or if you've been having consistent failures, then it's worth re-leveling and checking again. So number nine, again, not many people necessarily know this. They might just go out there and buy any old FEP and then try and locate it on their VAT. That's not always the case. There is different thicknesses to FEP films. So make sure you've got the right thickness of FEP required for your machine. If the FEP is too thin or too thick, you could potentially end up with prints that lack detail. Also here, I'll also mention, it's good to remove the VAT and the FEP from your printer every now and again. I typically do this every couple of prints. Reason being is the FEP will sometimes stick to your LCD. Air can sometimes get trapped inside, which can cause print failures. So yeah, just keep an eye out for that. Use the right FEP and just sometimes remove the VAT and make sure it's not stuck to the screen between every couple of prints. And finally, number 10. So if a print failure has gone really awry and you've drained the vat of resin and then you end up with loads of micro pieces of cured resin in your vat, a lot of people would be tempted to use something like their hand or, or, or paper towels to get rid of all that debris you'll probably find that really hard to do and I wouldn't recommend touching it anyway. What I do is I use a small bit of masking tape wrapped up and I will dab that on every bit of debris that I've found. Hopefully you'll very rarely have to do this. I had to do it quite a few times when I began printing and every now and again amounts to some debris trapped inside the vat once cleaning. So yeah, if you identify any small bits of cured resin in your vat once you've cleaned it, a small wrapped up piece of masking tape, dab it on those and it should bring it straight off without you having to touch anything and potentially wreck your FEP. So yeah, that's 10 things I do to maintain my FEP film. Like I said earlier, that list is not exhaustive. If you've already got great success, keep doing what you're doing. And if you have any other suggestions or anything to add, by all means, throw it down in the comments, help people out. Anything I've talked about or shown in the video, there'll be links to down in the description. 
Those links will be affiliate links, so if you buy through them, you're supporting the channel. If you like any of the models you've seen, then consider checking out our Patreon. There is a link in the description below. We also have a Facebook page and a Discord, so feel free to join them if you want to become a part of a growing community. Finally, I just want to give a shout out to our patrons. Thanks for your ongoing support. It means a great deal and it allows me to do what I love doing. And yeah, that's about it. If there's any other 3D printing subjects you think might be beneficial, then please don't hesitate to get in touch and make suggestions. That's me done for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.